Hey everyone, so this video is gonna be about the idea of the basic reactions that all the metals give. Now I shouldn't say all because not all the metals react in the same way and that's the basic idea of the reactivity series. So let's imagine a reactive metal. It could react with pure water, which is cold water generally. It could react with dilute acids. It could react with other salt solutions. So let's let's take a pure metal, which is just metallic bonding. Let's say sodium. It has no charge on it. If it tends to react with water, water which is a combination of H and OH, which is H2O. So what actually happens is that the H ions and OH ions react differently. Sodium being a metal tends to make bond with OH minus because sodium makes a plus one charge. So sodium is a plus one, OH is a minus one. And what happens to the H? Now H cannot be written as a separate element, so we write H2. Obviously in order to balance that equation, we'll talk about it. So H2 gas is released and sodium hydroxide is one of the products in our case. If sodium, the same metal, reacts with a dilute acid, we should know that acids have the hydrogen ions in them. So what happens is, for example, we have dilute hydrochloric acid and sodium as a metal reacts. So again, sodium makes a bond with chloride ions because sodium can easily become a plus one, Cl minus one. And what happens to the H? It becomes H2. So again, hydrogen gas is released from the dilute acid as well. Now is sodium, the same metal with no charge on it in the beginning, wants to react with a salt solution. What happens? A salt solution is actually an aqueous solution of any salt with cation and anion. For example, it's iron 2 chloride, which is Fe2 plus ions and chloride minus 1 ion. So Fe has a charge of 2 plus and Cl has a charge of minus 1. If sodium reacts, sodium tries to make a bond with the chloride ion because sodium will become a plus 1 and chloride is a minus 1 and it will separate the iron, it will displace the iron. So you'll observe that the iron metal is trying to settle down. This is the basic idea of how reactive metals behave. These are all examples of single displacement reactions. Because the metal which had a zero charge in the beginning tries to take the position of other element or other ion. Sodium makes sodium hydroxide, it makes sodium chloride, it makes again sodium chloride, and it displaces the other element or ion. And that leads us to metal reactivity series. Imagine we have multiple metals and we have test tubes which have cold water in them. So we have metals ranging from sodium to copper, each with a zero charge on them, which means they are pure metals. They are not compounds, they have no charge on them, they haven't lost any electron. So that's why they have zero charge. They are not positive and the test tubes have cold water in them. So it's pure cold water. Why do I keep saying cold? I'll, I'll tell you later, but let's just call it cold water. Now, if you pour all these metals in the test tubes, what will be the observation? You're gonna see bubbles of colored as gas. But you're going to see these bubbles at different rates from different test tubes. The one with sodium is going to release bubbles really quickly, but copper doesn't release bubbles at all. So what's this all about? When we talk about metals reacting with cold water, the idea is that different metals are going to behave differently. So starting from potassium, sodium, lithium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, lead and copper, and then silver. Because these are the metals that make the metal reactivity series. So when we talk about their reactions with cold water, water which is again a combination of H plus and OH minus, potassium easily makes potassium hydroxide with K plus and OH minus. What happens to the H of the water, it becomes H2 gas because hydrogen never stays alone. And then we balance it. This reaction is very vigorous 
because potassium loses its electron very easily and makes potassium hydroxide really quick. So you're going to see quick bubbling. In case of sodium, again, the same reaction happens. This time you get sodium hydroxide, another alkali. Again, you're going to receive the bubbles of hydrogen gas. Same goes for lithium hydroxide because lithium reacts with water to make LiOH and then hydrogen gas is released. In the case of calcium, when calcium reacts with water, you get calcium hydroxide which has a different chemical formula because calcium makes a plus two charge by losing two electrons. The idea remains the same, that you're gonna balance the equation, you're gonna put a two before the H2O, and they're gonna see the bubbles of colorless gas because that's hydrogen. Magnesium, aluminum, and then all the metals below it, they do not react with cold water. They're not gonna react with cold water at all. They're not gonna lose their electrons, they're not gonna make their alkalis. Why? Because they are less reactive. So you're not gonna see any effervescence, you're not gonna see any colorless gas coming out because obviously there is no reaction, there's no hydrogen, and you do not form any alkali out of these. So there's no alkali possible for aluminum hydroxide or copper hydroxide. Coming back to the idea, every time a reactive metal behaved with cold water, you got hydrogen coming out of it. So just safe side, what's a test for the colorless gas which is coming out? A chemical test could be asked in your O-level examination. So you take a light and splint and suddenly with the hydrogen coming out, it pops and you receive a pop sound and the light and splint extinguished. Now, now let's talk about the unreactive metals, what they would do. Since they're not reacting with cold water, they react with steam, which is obviously boiled water. And they don't make alkalis, instead they make their metal oxide. So magnesium makes magnesium oxide with steam, aluminium makes aluminium oxide with steam, and the hydrogen is obviously evolved in this case. With zinc, the same reaction happens. Let's, let's balance the aluminium equation first. You put a three before the water, and that allows three oxygen and six uh, hydrogen atoms, and then you balance it by putting a two before aluminium. Zinc reacts with steam to make zinc oxide, iron makes iron 2 oxide, lead makes lead 2 oxide. You're going to receive hydrogen over there. In case of copper and silver, they do not react with steam even. So they are very, very unreactive and that's why they are at the bottom of the series. So that's the idea of metals reacting with either cold water or reacting with steam. So I hope you're going to remember this idea because we're going to keep using this reactivity series in upcoming videos. Stay tuned guys, thanks.